John here guys and today we're talking about the Beta FPV Lite 2 radio. Looks like a walking marshmallow. No offense. This is a compact affordable radio option that you can use for on the go traveling but especially for you beginners out there. This is the best way to get your hands on try at flying FPV without spending a lot of money. I know a lot of people are really on the fence about whether they should try to learn how to fly FPV uh, flying, which is first person video where you go through the goggles. And that's because the introductory cost, well, this cost $39.99. And if you pair that with another 10 to $20 for a simulator, you can now comfortably learn how to fly an FPV drone from the comfort of your own home for less than the cost of a major video game release. So if you just skip that next version of Call of Duty, put it off till next month, get one of these instead. You can teach yourself how to fly a drone and then decide if you wanna commit more money and actually buy the drone, buy the goggles and go from there. Now there have been a lot of these sort of introductory beginner radios on the market, but a lot of them are really only useful for the quad that you purchase with them. So they come in these kits. Emacs has a kit, Ishin has a couple of kits, and now Beta FPV has a kit, but you can also buy this separate, which is one of the notable, really good things about this. This you can also pair with any FR Sky compatible D8 or D16 receiver. That covers your Emacs Tiny Hawks, that covers your Tiny Whoops, that covers your XM Pluses. So anything from micro all the way up to five inch, you can accommodate with this thing. It's really great because it has four switches, which is all you're ever gonna need. I normally only ever use maximum of three. So you would have one that would be your modes. By default, this one at the, at the front is your modes. Uh, by default, the one at the back, which is switch A, is your arm, disarm. And then one of these over here is for turtle mode. There's a very easy to do turn on um, to right here on the center front button. There is a bind button at the back, which will put it into bind mode. And then there is a setup button. Now to switch from D8 to D16 protocols is very easy. All you do is get a little screwdriver, hold that setup button as you power it on. That will switch it. It'll flash two times for one mode and one time for the other mode. So it's very easy to switch back and forth if you're flying different types of quads. Uh, by default, it goes into bottom, like I said, and has a USB port at the bottom, and that is how you connect it if you wanted to configure anything on the computer. That's not necessary to do. It's pretty much working fine out of the box. I haven't done that to mine, but the notable thing is it actually charges here. So it comes with a battery, unlike most of your expensive radios. It comes with a battery. It is a little 350 milliamp hour 2S battery right here. Uh, you just plug that in. And the cool thing about this is it actually charges the battery through USB. So once you have this set up, you don't ever have to take it off, um, but you can have additional batteries for this if you want to be able to keep flying forever in the field. Very convenient. So there are pretty much only pros to this. Like I said, buy yourself the simulator, buy yourself this. If you decide FPV is not for you and you don't like flying, you've spent less than 60 bucks. You can generally be able to sell this to anybody, give it away, give it to a kid. It's very close to the size of an Xbox 360 controller. So it's gonna fit so comfortably in your hand. I actually really enjoy flying uh, small crafts, tiny whoops with this thing. So if you're on the fence about wanting to try it, I think this is the best release that we've seen in a long time that are gonna get more people to try it. Once you know it's for you, then you can dive in, upgrade to an, a more expensive radio, but this is actually good enough to get you going for quite a while. These are actual hobby grade gimbals. The throw is a little bit on the small side, but it's not really that bad. In fact, the throw is somewhat similar, maybe slightly smaller than the Tango 2, which I have here. This is a $160 radio. The Pro version is actually $200. 
versus this, which is only $40. Some people are modding these, adding screens and even crossfire compatibility. I don't think that you need to do that. You could just keep this radio as a backup, keep it as a simulator tool, pass it on to the next time. If you outgrow it, it's only $40 or you could very easily spend your first couple of years flying with this and only after you go deep down that rabbit hole decide to upgrade if you really need to ever. What do you think guys? Um, if you are still on the fence about trying FPV, is this gonna convince you to try it? I think this can really help get a lot of people flying, so congratulations, great job on this beta FPV. These are exactly the kind of releases that we need, things that are gonna help people get in the hobby. All of the radios that come with the Emacs kit, the Ishin kit, they're okay. They work, you know, but like those are toy grade and this is actual hobby grade. I don't know how they've made it this cheap. They could easily have charged two, two and a half times as much and it still would have been a pretty good deal. But at $40, it is insane um, not to have one. If I wanted to go on a trip, trip or I wanted to go gorilla whooping or I wanted to do something, would I really take something with me this large that takes up this much space that needs a separate charger to charge it, that needs a separate module for crossfire? Or would I just bind it up to this thing, take this with me? Thanks guys.